Welcome to this tutorial um, where I'm going to show you how to construct a uh, double page spread for a magazine project. So just to give you an overview on the new file that I've created, I've made sure it's an A4 sheet with, an, with a 10 mil margin, a 3 mil bleed, and I've also set it up so there are five columns on each A4 page. What those do is give me an opportunity and help with the layout. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, this doesn't have to be done in this way, but the first thing I want to do is add my main image for the art, uh, for the double page spread. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto a rectangle frame tool and I'm going to select this area here around this third. Now I'm going to click File and Place or Command D. I'm going to select my image called Baz, which is essentially um, an image of Baz Luhrmann, the film director, who is the main focus of the article itself. I am going to make increase my image around uh, the bleed area. Next thing I'm going to do just to add a stylistic um, element of content is I'm going to use a rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle around here and then I'm going to go onto properties and I'm going to fill that in a particular colour and the colour that I'm going to select on this occasion is actually loaded up from my CC libraries and it's a colour swatch that I created on every colour called Baz in relation to Mr Lerman and these are the key, the key and main colours that are utilised in this image and they're going to help with the flow and with the brand design. So in terms of my fill I'm going to use this red to fill it. Now I'm going to go into layers and I'm just going to put that underneath the Baz image so that imp, that's that box is behind the image, neatens it up a slight bit. So that's it so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to put the article itself together. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into text and I'm going to draw a text box using the margins as closely as I possibly can. We don't really want text outside these margins. I'm going to draw a text box there and I'm going to type in the article headline all that Baz. And I'm going to select that font, that text should I say, and I'm going to change the font to Mix Study Down, which is a font that I've added to my CC library from Adobe Fonts. I'm going to select the heavy option and I'm going to increase the size of the text to make sure it is very much clearly a headline for the article. If I keep increasing it, I will lose eventually the text because the box isn't big enough. So I've reduced it ever so slightly. I'm happy with it at that side, I think. Okay. So now I'm happy with that text box. I'm now going to add another one again. So I'm just going to draw another text box underneath that. I am going to move it slightly so the text box are next to each other. I'm now going to add my um, my subline or my subheading which states at Elvis director tells the truth behind an icon. Again, I'm going to select all that. I'm going to change it to the right font. This time I'm probably going to go regular and I'm going to increase the font size of that a little bit more. Not too much though. Um, I'm also going to just spread out that text a little bit more and make it a slightly taller. And there we go. So now we've got that. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is add the main text of the article itself. So to do that, I need to go to my Word document, which I have all my text for my article loaded up on. And I'm going to select it all. and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in a second. But before I do that, I'm going to draw another text box. This time in line with this other text, but it's going to cover all five columns of the page. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and avoid going as, uh, to the edge of the margin. So I'm going to go to about here, and then I'm going to paste it all in. 
Now, obviously we can see here multiple reasons. That's not, there are multiple things going on. That's not the entire article. Um, we've lost a lot of it. So I do need to make sure I've got more columns on the page. And then I'll make sure I can see all of the article. So I'm just going to select all. So I'm going to select object and I'm going to go to text frame options and general columns. It's usually a fixed number of one. So you have one big text column. I'm going to make this three. And as we can see now, it has reduced the amount of font. But if we look down here, there's a little red plus sign. Now if I, if I select, hover over that and select it, you can see then a little appearance of more text. If I then go and select, click here, it then automatically creates another text box to try to make sure that the rest of that text will fit. Again, there's still another plus sign here, so there's more text that hasn't fit. We will fix that in ML. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort out my byline, which is the author's name, so hence it's by a line with the person who wrote the article. So I'm going to change that to, in fact, first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to select all. I'm going to change it all to mixed to regular. And I'm going to change it to point size nine, which is very much typical size. Now we can see we've got all the article. I'm going to go to my byline and I'm going to change this to mixed to bold and I'm going to make it a little bit larger giving the writer a little bit more emphasis. What I'm now going to do, so a uh, queue time lapse, I'm going to spread out the paragraphs within the article and then we'll start editing it a little bit more. Okay, so that's that. So what I wanted to do before I move on is actually give credit to uh, Miss A. Blythe, who, who wrote this article um, for Deadline magazine. I am just using it as an example for how to make a magazine cover in particular to be, to be used in educational context. So please don't sue me. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've spaced out all my paragraphs now. I've started to get the, the double page spread is, is taking shape. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some page numbers um, and I'm going to add a footer. So to add a page number, uh, before I add a page number, I'm going to add a little line at the bottom to show me where the margin is. It's just a little design feature that I'm going to include. So I've clicked a line there and then I'm going to click on stroke and I'm going to select a color from my palette again and I'm just going to do this as two points. I'm actually also going to copy that and paste it and I'm going to do it, put it in the same place in the bottom corner. I'm then going to go into text box and in this same area I'm going to draw a text box and I'm going to write the number 24 for page 24 got to change the font to Mixter Ultra Light. I'm going to change the font size of it slightly to 10. I'm going to make sure it's a left alignment and I'm going to add a little, make it italicized ever so slightly. I'm happy with that. So what I'm also going to do with this one is I'm going to copy that again and I'm going to create a copy of that and I'm going to drag it down into the same place bottom and then I'm going to select the text, I'm going to align it right and I'm going to change the text colour to white so it contrasts off Basil Herman's jacket. need to change this to 25 obviously. If we were making more magazine pages we could use um, a master A page to basically identify what um, where our page numbers would go and they would just repeat every time we make new. Uh, so if we created a new double page spread, it would then be to page 26, 27. But for the purpose of just doing two page spread, this is an okay way to do things. Uh, so moving on from there then, um, I'm going to add a, a footnote now. So I'm going to align this to the right hand side of 
even though I align it to the right hand side of, of this margin, I'm just going to write mode magazine, which is the name of this fictional magazine. I'm going to align that right as well. I'm going to change that to mixer. I'm going to do that in regular and I'm also going to change the colour to another colour from a palette. So it's disappeared, but the reason that's disappeared is just it's ever so slightly too big to fit in the box. So there's the mode magazine footer. Okay, so this is starting to take shape as a magazine now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a couple more images. Uh, and I'm going to add them specifically to this page here. So we've got more imagery uh, to make reference to when they're images from the film Elvis itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use the rectangle tool again and I'm going to draw a rectangle. Um, towards the end bottom of the text box. And then I'm going to place, and I'm going to place my image of Tom Hanks. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to click fit fill, fill frame proportionately. Um, because I've now lost some of the image when I've filled the proportion, I'm just going to make the text box, the uh, rectangle a little bit bigger so I can actually see the main image. And then I'm actually going to make a, another rectangle tool, draw another rectangle tool, and I'm going to use my guide from make drawing this initial one place again i'm going to add one of austin butler and Baz Luhrmann having a chat on set fitting fill frame proportionately as a result of me doing that this time is fit a lot better so what we'll notice though is unfortunately if i was to turn off this image here the text is still behind it so what i need to do i'm just going to wrap the text. So I've selected this first image of Hanks and I've gone over here to text wrap, wrap around a bounding box. And then I can manually do this. So if you can see here on the, this is actually so sort of three millimeter, meaning that text cannot go near it three millimeters above. Maybe two should be fine in this case. And then if I do the same for this one, So again, all good. Now I do want to add a, I do want to add a caption for these images. So I'm going to add another text box now. Oh. Doesn't matter that it's not in the right place at the moment. I will move it in a moment. Uh, so left to right, we've got Hanks doing his best. Grandpa frown. And Lerman and Butler discussing eleven. So it's, now again, as you can see, the text isn't within the box, so I'm just going to make that frame a little bit bigger, um, as per usual. Uh, I'm going to select the font. I'm going to change it to our usual font. Mix it down. Ultra light going to italicize it somewhat and I'm also going to make it a lot smaller font size 8 seems suitable there as I can see it's not quite good enough in terms of where I want it to be so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my images up slightly Just need to move another. There we go. And now I can move this text a little bit more. There we go. So now by by the fact I've used the text frame tool, all my text, and this has just moved the rest of the text down, which makes it fill the page quite nicely now. So one other thing let's do, let's add a pull quote. So we can add a pull quote from something Baz Luhrmann says about Elvis. Um, there's a quote when I was reading this article originally, which is really nice about um, Elvis being a really complex man. So if I draw a, another text box here, and I'm just going to write, um, he was a man, both complex and self-destructive. Change that to white, 
I'm going to centralize it. I'm going to change it to my mixer font. I'm going to make it larger. Maybe not that large. What we've noticed here is because of the word destructive has gone over onto a new line, it's actually hyphenated it. So what I do want to do is I don't want it to show hyphenation. So if we tick here on paragraph hyphenate, it will do that. Now that looks a lot better. So I'm just going to move it ever so slightly. I'm also going to add another text box and I'm just going to add on there a speech mark, a, a speech mark, a quotation mark. Um, and I'm going to make sure that that's white. I'm going to make sure that's also mixter regular. I'm also going to make it a lot larger, maybe ever so slightly larger than the font itself, just so it stands out a little bit. And I'm then actually just going to make a copy of it. And I'm then going to go on objects and I'm going to click transform and flip horizontal for my other one. So then I've got both sides of my speech mouse. I'm now going to move it and place it around my quote. And there we go. So if I look at the preview, I'm actually really happy with where this is looking right now. Um, I think I'm going to add a couple of little um, nice stylistic lines to separate my main headline and then want to signify the end of the article and I'd say that's as done. So just do one here. Um, oh. Just do that again. I want it to kind of be in line with the bottom of the article and the sides, which it is. I'm going to change my stroke two points and I'm going to make it the yellow colour this time and then I'm going to add one here as well. Notice how it snaps it in place around the edge of um, the edge of my text box. So I'm going to go for the dark red on this one. Two points again. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I think I am. I think what I want to do with this text box is I just slightly move it down, centralize it a little bit more on this page. As a result of that, I'm just going to move this slightly. Um, I kind of feel like I pr could probably get away with moving this ever so slightly too. Or in fact, moving this up a few. This up. And then finally, this object. Space out a little bit more. Let's move that a little bit more. Okay, so that's it. So if I, um, obviously well, I am on preview mode, so now I'm really happy with this. What I want to do as I finish it, I'm going to go file, and I'm going to go to export. Adobe PDF print is fine. So if I go for Baz, double page spread, click save and then what I need to do is make sure in this area it says pages export as a spread and range page two to three because if we look here so if I just cancel it a second if we look here this is page two to three there's always going to be a first page because you've set it up as an A4 project so to ensure it prints off or exports as a double page we need to obviously export and make sure it says spread range two to three and click export. Now if I just quickly minimize InDesign, this should have saved and there we have it. Our double page spread. So that's the end of the um, tutorial. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps um, and hope you can make some really cool double page spreads uh, from this tutorial. Thank you.